multicultural education, now I even prefer to call it intercultural education, uh, it, it takes different forms, it must take different forms. Uh, although the principles are the same, uh, the, the forms must be contextualized to the local communities. So in terms of Burundi, uh, I, I continually I, I argue that uh, uh, intercultural education must uh, open spaces for uh, honest, candid, uh, interethnic, interregional, a broadly defined intergroup uh, uh, dialogue. People have to have space. Intercultural education uh, has to open those spaces. Uh, through schools, through community dialogues, uh, through uh, p political dialogues uh, where people can voice their experiences. Uh, intercultural education also uh, has to open spaces where people can feel safe to share their narratives. Everybody has a story uh, in Burundi. Uh, and no form of multicultural education or intercultural education uh, will be impactful uh, if uh, people are not allowed the opportunities to share uh, their narratives and, and to allow them to understand each other's narratives and to validate them. Because right now people tend to defend themselves only say, hey, I suffered, you know, your people did this to me. Say, oh, oh, I suffered too. But it's like the, the voices are crossing each other and no one is listening because the space uh, has not been uh, structured to facilitate listening and validation. So I would say through schools, whatever faith people, uh, faith groups, faith communities, clergy and all kinds of faith leaders have been instrumental in the peace process and they have to be an integral part of the reconstruction process uh, to foster dialogue uh, in regular community meetings. So uh, my view of uh, in, in introducing intercultural education in Burundi goes beyond the, the formal uh, education because only a small fraction of the Burundians are actually involved in, in, uh, in the formal uh, schooling process. So it has to be multi-dimensional. Uh,